What up, what up, Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Divas Divide YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, how to launch a new product into the world. How do you grow a brand from nothing? We cover that and more on this channel, as well as with my podcasts, with my books, with my courses, all of the different free education information that I put out there with my blog, crowdcrux.com, to the world to help you guys when it comes to reaching your full potential so you can impact the world. And of course, you can come on my podcast and you can share your story. So today, we're talking about how to build a brand when it comes to Kickstarter, how to actually get started with that. And I'm getting into that in just a second. All right, man, how you doing? I've been missing you. I hope that you've been watching some of my videos and also been tuning in my podcast and also been maybe checking out some of my free courses and content out there on the web with crowdcrux.com, et cetera. So I hope that you've been at least taking action towards your goals because I really do for me believe that my community is different from every community out there and that we are freaking action takers. We work hard towards our goals. We're willing to focus. We inject creativity into our work. We also have passion and we have that inspiration that other people just lack. We're not just having ideas. We are also action takers, right? So I'm really trying to get to 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. So it would mean so much to me if you would come subscribe to this channel um, and give me a thumbs up if you also like this video. But that being said, let's get into some of the major tenets and principles when it comes to building a brand from nothing that you maybe have not thought about before or that haven't even just been presented to you in this easy to understand and digestible way. So let's start on the more technical front, which is developing brand guidelines. Okay, so brand guidelines are something that actually I don't recommend starting with, but I think that from a technical standpoint, it's actually something that's easiest to do, right? When it comes to just kind of like a check mark item or a to-do list item. And that's really brand guidelines as it relates to your fonts, brand guidelines as it relates to your colors, your feel, your logos, all that kind of stuff. Now, the reason why I don't usually start with this is that I think that actually discovering your brand and your voice when it comes to your company that you're starting is very different from just establishing you know technical brand guidelines. But I would say that technical brand guidelines are definitely one of the hallmarks of any kind of new brand that you're trying to launch on Kickstarter. So for example, thinking about the colors that you're gonna be using in your marketing, thinking about the fonts that you're gonna be using, thinking about the way you present this on the page, your logos, the looks, the feel, what kind of even words would you use to describe the kinds of marketing and messaging that you do. So developing really strong and robust brand guidelines is gonna help keep your brand consistent. If you're working with, for example, a coach like myself or a marketer like myself or other people, it's gonna also help when it comes to working with and really brainstorming and working with other people to ensure that any kind of work that is distributed or created and of also adhering to these major principles. Otherwise, you might have some messages that are kind of on brand, some you know, campaign page that's a little bit off brand, some elements of it that are on brand, and it's gonna be very inconsistent. So if you want consistency, you gotta develop some brand guidelines. Number two is a little bit more introspective. So I really want you to think about this. I don't want you to just hear it. I really want you to think about this. What does this mean to you? And that's what is your vision when it comes to your impact on the world with this particular brand or with this particular company? Now, when I say vision, you can think of synopsis synonym of mission, right? What are you trying to do? What is the vision that you see happening in the future? Why is it that you're starting this? Why did you get so passionate about this? What was your inspiration? And more importantly, what does your brand say when it comes to you know what you're trying to actually communicate to the world? So message, mission, vision, these are all synonyms for basically what you're trying to have happen. And this is why this is so important is that it makes people kind of identify with you and what you're doing on a much higher level. For example, Nike, like think about Nike the Nike brand, okay? These guys are selling footwear, right? They're selling sneakers, which is a commodity. It's made out of, you know, it's things that anyone can get access to. Very easy to make, um, you know, very easy to manufacture. And obviously there's some interesting technology there as well. But when it comes to the materials, it's cloth, it's fabric, right? It's really a commodity at the end of the day. But what is Nike really good at? They're really good at branding. They're really good about solving a message. How do they want to impact the world? What is their vision? The fact that they're trying to get people to really realize and internalize that they can just do it. They can go out there, they can attack their goals, and they can actually see success in that way. So I would recommend kind of starting with the overall vision, and you might have a couple of different vision statements which you actually work on, and then you can also begin to work on some of your objectives as an organization, your objectives. What are you trying to have accomplished? For example, are you trying to you know, encourage that more and more people use sustainable materials or use you know look at exercise in a certain way or body image or positivity, right? Whatever the type of company that it is, think about some of your major major objectives that you have that you're going to then kind of more, I guess, specifically accomplish that vision which you have. The next thing when it comes to really creating and developing a brand is thinking about how you are going to do it in the ways that how is your technique, your approach, your culture different from other people? How is your way of doing things as it relates to assembling a product, thinking about a product, 
marketing, manufacturing? How is it different from everyone else? Is your way of actually developing new products more along the lines of Apple, where you're actually thinking about, you know, in the original days, I guess you would say, or in the early days, right, when Steve Jobs was running the company, the things that you would leave out and minimalism and intense focus, right? And really also transitioning very quickly to new technologies, even maybe before you're ready. How is your way of thinking about product design? How is your way of putting products out there into the world, the materials that you choose to use, or even your ethos, your culture? How is this different from other people? The next point that I want to make is a little bit controversial, okay? And the reason why it's controversial is that whenever you make a stand, whenever you say that you believe in something, whenever you put something out there into the world and you're like, you know what, I believe in this, but not that. You're always going to have people who are on both sides of the equation. Some people agree with you, some people do not agree with you. And I think actually Kickstarter as a brand in and of itself is a great example of that. So Kickstarter obviously has their own brand. They have their own mission, they have their own vision, they have their own objectives, and they also have things that they stand for. Things that they stand for and that they believe in. And to be honest, you know, just looking at their company culture and also looking at their brand, in some ways that's alienated some of their customers, and in other ways it's really cohesively drawn and attracted other people to them, right? The types of people that also agree with those kinds of messages, whether that's you know more ethos, or that's more the beliefs, or how the world should be, et cetera. So think about what do you stand for as an organization? I know that sounds very lofty, very heady, right? Beyond like, I thought I was just making a product, right? But really, when you think about what you stand for as an organization, other people can not only relate with just what you're doing in terms of the problem and solution that you're doing with the product, but it can also relate with your brand, the people behind it, the company culture. And while they have never met you before, you've never met the people at Apple, you never met the people who are at Nike, et cetera, right? You never met the people who are major brands that we know and love. However, you know what those brands stand for, right? And it's almost like this entire organization, this entire institution is there to uphold what the brand stands for. And even some people that are working at the company don't agree with it necessarily, you know at the end of the day what the organization is going to move towards and what they really stand for. So think for you, what does your brand stand for? What do you stand for as an organization? What are some of the values that you have? What are some of the things that if someone is to ask you what you care about, what you believe in, what are those things? Because that's really great when it comes to internal PR, trying to hire people, trying to get people to work for you, get people excited but it's also for what I call external PR, which is getting those customers to believe more in you, not just around your product, but also around the people that are designing that product. So when you begin to think this out a tiny bit, we we'll begin to resonate with a much larger crowd of people, and it goes beyond just the founder who maybe has their own ideas about how the world should be. When you really codify this, and you create this, and you build this into a brand with your messaging, with your values, with the things that you believe in, all of a sudden, you start to relate with those people on a much bigger scale, and it's almost very similar to how an influencer will develop their crowd. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrite is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrite today. Link in the description. The next thing when it comes to building a brand from nothing is to really think about your tribe. And that's the people that you're trying to attract and the people that you're trying to repel, right? So I definitely have people who I repel from my videos. I all the time have people commenting, Sal, you talk too quickly. Tell you're all, Sal, you're all over the place. Sal, you're doing this, how you're doing that. But I have also people who have been with me for years, who have invested multiple times in my courses, in my products, in my coaches, in hiring me, right? So I'm really appealing to a certain niche demographic of people with my brand. And the same is true of you, which is that you have people that you want to attract and people that you want to repel. So the more you can identify who your tribe is, what do they look like, right? If you had to create an avatar, if you had to think about what they believe in, if you had to think about what got them excited about your product in the first place, what are the things that they care about, right, that are happening in the world? When it comes to the things that they care about with the materials maybe, even of the product that's being made, how do they view themselves? What keeps them up at night? These are the questions that you can ask yourself to really understand who it is that you're going after, who it is that's part of your tribe, and who it is is, that's not. And any major brand that's out there, any major person who's had any kind of influence whatsoever in this world always has their tribe and has other people that repel them. They're very polarizing in that way. You cannot create a brand for everyone. So we'll share just one or two more tips as it relates to building a brand from scratch and kind of understanding this. And a lot of this is obviously a little bit more heady, you know, than technical. However, these are important things when it comes to building an organization. And again, a lot of this is both internal PR within a company, but also external PR in the way that you're talking about the brand. So at the end of the day, the brand is really based in the heads of the people who you're serving. It's based on the experiences that they have 
with your product, but if you're start, you know, starting a brand from nothing, they obviously don't yet have an experience with your product. So the way that I like to think about this is to really imagine what would people say about your company? If they saw your product, if they saw your brand and saw it in a few more repetitions, what would they really say about this? Would they say that it's minimalistic, that it looks like it's rugged and durable? Would they say that it looks like it's cutting edge, innovative materials or in a new technology or the way that you're incorporating this into the product, right? What do you think about what would people say about your brand? And specifically, if let's just say their significant other so that they spent a bunch of money on this product that they really didn't have to do, right? Maybe you have the money obviously to do it, but like they really didn't have to. And they had to explain it like, hey, I saw this bill. Why did you get this, right? And you had to explain that. How would you explain it? Is it for because I need to have better equipment or I need to have something that's a little bit more minimalistic or I need to have something that has many different compartments and this is why I love it, right? This is made with such incredibly great materials that's gonna be durable and long lasting forever. Or this is so, this is the high end, this is the cream of the crop and this is why I got it. Or I just believe in the way that this mission, you know, is being executed in terms of sustainability, right? Think a little bit about what would other people say about your brand, what do you want them to say, and more specifically, what would they tell other people as to why they bought or why they believe in your company and your products. So I've got one more tip for you today, which is actually, in my opinion, the most important of all of them. But before I do, definitely go and check out my free course down below when it comes to how to actually start a Kickstarter campaign. So starting a brand, when it comes to a whole new brand on Kickstarter is definitely a big feat. And there's no reason why not to just ask for a little bit of help. When I first got started in this industry, there was nothing like this out there. I've taken years and years to develop teachings and principles and resources to help you, whether it's my free blog on crowdtrucks.com, my YouTube videos, my podcast where I'm interviewing people that are raising money every single week. I'm really trying to help you, man, reach your full potential. So if you want to really get access to that in a step-by-step -step fashion, go and check out the free course I have to, down below at crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter, as well as some of the other links that I got there in the description. If you want to learn more about how we can talk, how we can interact, and how we can help you get this company set up from nothing. So this is kind of a little bit of a secret, all right? But really when it comes down to it, if you wanna build a brand from scratch, from nothing, and you wanna do it on Kickstarter, there's one question that you have to ask yourself, and that is how will people's identity change once they bought your product? Think about that. How will someone, how do they wanna perceive themselves? What is their identity at the end of the day? And by buying your product, how does it move them one step closer towards that identity that they wanna have? So for example, if they're a nature outdoor goer, a backpacker, a camper, you know, someone who loves hiking, and you come out with a new backpack or a new hiking product, maybe they wanna feel like they're ultimately prepared. That no matter what happens, they got everything they need in their little rucksack or in their little you know backpack and has all these little compartments and they're ultimately prepared for anything that is going to happen. Or maybe you created a new EDC product, right? And that EDC product has a bunch of different functionality. So even if a random situation comes up, they're gonna be prepared for that particular situation. Or maybe you've even created a new fashion product or a new, um, you know, so for example, you've created new sneakers that allow you to go into the water. It's not gonna have like a very waterlogged sneaker. So they're almost waterproof to a degree. And for someone who loves paddleboarding or someone who loves going and doing lots of stuff in nature, love doing outdoor stuff, maybe for them, that also plays into their identity, which is that they can go and they can go and play and do that stuff. They can go kayaking if they want to with their friends. And then of course they can go pop into, uh, you know, a saloon, I guess, or, you know, pop into a bar and just have a have a beer, have a you know, glass of wine with some of their friends, and it's not going to be any kind of weird transition there. So think about what is their identity? What is the identity you're trying to appeal to? And how, by buying your product, are they moving closer to that identity? And at the end of the day, that's really the crux of your brand. Think about the brands that you buy. Think about the products that you buy. How do they move you closer, one step closer to that identity that you believe in, that you have, that you want to continue to be, and really help you, I guess you say, be the best version of yourself. So I hope that this got you thinking a little bit, got those wheels turning a little bit, and got you brainstorming some of the things you might have to think about and answer in order to really create a brand from nothing. And really, at the end of the day, you know, this is kind of incorporating some of these thoughts and realizations and answers into your brand guidelines, but also into the messages which you're communicating through your graphics, through your videos, through the content you're putting out there on social media, through the things that you choose to highlight when it comes to your Kickstarter campaign page, through the things that you go through when it comes to your videos specifically on the Kickstarter campaign. These are things that you can incorporate in order to create that kind of brand cohesive feel. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Come subscribe for this content for more videos just like this. My name is Sal and I'll see you next time.